This is the smallest Android smartphone I've ever used, and it's called the Unihertz Jelly 2E, a mini Android 12 smartphone. Now, it has a 3-inch screen size, and it only weighs 110 grams. And not only that, it only costs 169 US dollars. And as weird as it might sound, I'm actually quite impressed with it. But why? You might be asking, gee, Zaki, why bother when you've got an iPhone 14 Pro as your daily driver? Why can't you just use it like a regular smartphone like that? And you will be right, but the distractions of a smartphone don't come from the phone itself, but how you set it up. And to put it simply, with a million apps on my iPhone, the distraction is just too overwhelming. It simply doesn't bode well for productivity, and I felt that that was an actual problem. I was checking my phone first thing in the morning and last at night, just bombarded with new messages, emails, to-dos, and other stimuli that often makes me stressed and anxious, giving me no time and space to start my day calmly. I just felt hijacked, and it didn't stop there. By allowing myself to do so, I set the tone for a distracted day, and I felt my ability to focus got heavily decreased and stayed glued to my phone all day. So I decided to go cold turkey for a week with some smartphone detoxing, if you will, with the Unihertz Jelly 2E. And for the most part, I actually enjoyed the experience. Now, of course, there are just a few things on this phone that I wish it had, and at least some that's worth paying a little more to get better hardware. But again, this is a budget phone, so I have to dial back on my expectations a little bit. With that said, Unihertz still did a good job with the Jelly 2E, and here's why. But before we get into it, this channel is supported by brands who help us improve our content and keeps us going. So stay around for this sponsored message. Here at Geek Culture, we've tested plenty of chairs, but Secret Lab gaming chairs remain one of our favorites. Whether it's for work or play, they feel great to lean back against, with their ergonomic features offering support for the whole body, from the head and back to the arms, and even something for your butt. This mix of form and function helps the Titan EVO 2022 deliver the best seating experience like no other. For more information, check out secretlab.co. So let's start off with what you get in the box. With smartphones this affordable and this niche, you'd expect it to be a complete package that includes a screen protector, a USB-C charging cable, and a silicon case inside. Unfortunately, Unihertz did not provide a charging adapter here for whatever reason, but that's a pretty quick fix if you already have an existing charger lying around. Now, one nice thing about it is that it comes with this cool little lanyard to tie at the bottom of your silicone case. You know, just in, just in case you have this uh, buttery fingers and a product dropping the phone, which is pretty cool. Now, getting right down to the aesthetic and build quality, just to give you an idea of how small the phone is, okay? This is the size compared to my 6.1 inch iPhone 14 Pro. It, it really is, that small. And we are looking at a dimension of 4.8 cm by 9.3 cm by 1.6 cm with its weight again at 110 grams. So it's a really compact phone. However, you do get a thicker edge. You know, it's as if you're kind of folding the, the iPhone. Oh man, I wish iPhone made foldables. That'd be great. Anyway, honestly, I, I can't fault that because if you think with a phone that small, you need some of that thickness to no, wrap around your hand. And it's also easy to fit in the pocket. And I just love it. Curvy edge, which provides a nice grip while still being great at one-handed use. That, that didn't come out, right? Anyway, popping on the silicone case adds a little bit more thickness and provides more protection against, you know, scratches and drops. And to be frank with you, it's very reminiscent of the Nokia 3310 or the W800i. So, you do get that retro feel. God, I'm really showing my age now. I feel old. It's really hardy, it's dense, and it seems to be made out of very hard plastic. And I'm pretty sure the Jelly 2E can sustain some accidental knocks and drops as well. Not that you really want to, but shush, you can. You also have knickknacks and buttons here with the volume buttons being on the left side. And on the right side, you have the power button and this red customizable shortcut button. By default, holding the shortcut button will activate the flashlight. Woo, look at that. And double clicking it will, you know, take a screenshot. So there's that. We also see a dual SIM card tray on the right side, which bear in mind, can hold a combination of nano SIM and a micro SD card as well. So you can easily expand the onboard 64 gigabyte storage with a micro SD card of up to two terabytes. Can't believe you want to use two terabytes on this phone, it's nuts. But hey, you do you. 
We also have the USB charging port, which is a little bit awkward, especially if you're right-handed. It's, it's not a big deal because you've got a 2000 mAh battery and it sounds small, but with a low power output on this phone, it actually charges relatively quickly and lasts for, for days. More on that later. Beneath the display, you have the three classic Android buttons with back, home and tasks, uh, which come in handy if you're having trouble swiping up to get out of the app or switch between apps. I mean, it, the display is really small, so it, sometimes it can get finicky. And at the rear, you have a fingerprint scanner, which is a nice touch for added security on top of the facial recognition lock for the phone. Um, now, for the responsiveness of both, it might take a few tries with the fingerprint sensor uh, and the facial recognition, you got to have good light. So, I mean, you got the mix of facial recognition, fingerprint scanner, and, and a pin if you're really into keeping this little tiny phone very safe. That aside, the Jelly 2E has some unique hardware choices. Uh, you've got 4G connectivity, wireless AC, otherwise known as Wi-Fi 5, and an infrared port. Now, what's surprising here is that there's no NFC and 5G connectivity with the former being pretty much the shortfall because I use a lot of NFC contactless payments, so I feel it should belong on every phone nowadays. On top of that, I mean, you don't really need the 5G. It's it's a small phone, it, it processes a little bit slower, so you don't really need 5G to watch 720p on YouTube. Now, the most interesting one is the infrared port, and I'm glad it's on this one because it's just a quick way to turn on some home appliances like the TV or the AC. Now you do have to get a universal remote app and I've been using this app called Lean Remote. It's got all the major brands and it works with various devices like your projector, Blu-ray player, AC TV, and even your soundbars. The app is simple and easy to use and it's absolutely free, so do check it out. Now what you're getting here on the screen is a really cute three inch LCD display. Nothing fancy here, no AMOLED, no OLED, which isn't really a bad thing. You're getting a 480 by 854 pixel with a pixel density of 326 pixels per inch. And for what it's worth, the display is bright. It's got surprisingly good colors and the texts are sharp. Now, it can be a little bit difficult to see details up close. Let's say if you're just scrolling through Instagram and you're trying to zoom in, um, since it's coming from a much smaller display, but that 326 PPI keeps all that visuals sharp. And I didn't feel as bad as I thought reading through a whole article on a small screen, about say 35 centimeters away from my eyes. With that, you also do get a decent viewing experience when it comes to entertainment. So with YouTube videos going up to 720p at 60 frames per second, and other quality is what you expect from a phone like this. Now you do have downward facing speakers on the bottom of the phone. They are not like bombastic, but they're loud enough to discern dialogue and you can obviously hear a ringtone in crowded places. And uh, Unihertz has kept it old school with its 3.5mm uh, headphone jack, but you do get Bluetooth 5.2 if you like to pair it with your wireless earbuds. So the typing experience here is uh it's very it's very mixed. It, it's not a phone that grants you speedy thumbs, okay? Can go ta 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 okay? Yeah, I've got fat fingers to say the least, so it takes a while getting used to. In fact, I find myself typing a little slower but the touchscreen is surprisingly accurate while using the tip of my thumb. It's something folks need to be aware of and typing the wrong letter is gonna be like a common hurdle. So, you know, it is what it is. You know, the shortcut or the alternative here is to just simply use voice messages. Or you can even like utilize Google Assistant to help you with speech to text, uh, which, you know, also helped for more urgent situations. Now, if you think about gaming, <laughs> it's, it's possible. It's, it's possible uh, to, to a limited degree. I have to say that to a limited degree. You know, don't expect heavy 3D gaming like Call of Duty Mobile or Mobile Legends or the like. Your, your fingers will be blocking the majority of the screen. So if you like some sort of entertainment, then, you know, casual games like Bubble Pop or Angry Birds, you know, games that are not so heavy on the graphics. Yeah, yeah, they will, they will do the trick. Camera-wise, we've got a 16 megapixel rear camera and a 12 megapixel front camera. Uh, overall image quality, well, you know what you pay is what you get. So for the most part, photo quality is decent under good lighting situations. Uh, the colors look pretty natural in most cases. You also get up to 1080p video recording with the option of electronic image stabilization to assist in 
stabilizing the footage. And I would say that the cameras do a good job and video calls would be one instance where I use the cameras combined with its decent call quality as well. Now, as battery life goes, as I mentioned before, you get 2000 milliamp hour of battery capacity with a long standby time of up to more than three days. So this includes talk time of up to three hours and 20 minutes and LTE streaming of up to five hours and 30 minutes and music playback of up to nine hours and 30 minutes. So overall, I've seen less screen time alone due to the fact that having a phone this small made it a great way to cut down on my phone usage, which also means for the most part, I've left this phone mostly on standby, uh, lasting pretty much the whole day. And I know what you think, it might seem like torture to have a small display all this while, but it's a great way to discipline oneself. Uh, of course, it doesn't really negate the fact that I still work on bigger screens, uh, three of them actually. <laughs> but with a smartphone, something that's on the go, you know, it's still good to cut back on that. So after two weeks, will the Unihertz Jetty 2E continue to be the daily driver for me? As a creator, that's a hard no. But doesn't mean that I have not appreciated my time with it. The Jelly 2E is great for those who want to cut down on their phone usage, avoid their late night doom scrolling, and perhaps help you be more present in your life. So the Jelly 2E says what it does and it does it well. It's no doubt a very fun phone to use. And I can see that the Jelly 2E is going to be great as a secondary phone. Another cool thing is that if you want to get your kids on a mobile without getting them lured into the strange and private digital world where screen time limiting apps just don't work at all, then this phone suits those needs. So that's the Unihertz Jelly 2E in a nutshell. I hope you guys find this video helpful. And I think that minimalist phones are very unique and there's a ton of them out there. So if you'd like me to review more of these phones, do let me know in the comments down below. And if you like this video, then check out our gaming experience with the RG Phone 7.